All right, guys, it is part four of winemaking basics where we are going to get to racking and bottling our finished product. Now, normally, if there's a lot of sediment in the wine, I would have racked off good three, four weeks ago. But there wasn't a lot of sediment in these, so I let these just finish out on its own. You may notice that different wines or different batches take a longer or shorter to ferment out. In this case, the sugar times two took longer to finish out to the finished product. And how you can tell that it's finished is you wanna watch from the bottom. You wanna make sure there's no bubbling. There's no activity in your airlock. It's not bubbling. But even then, it's still really hard to tell if it's finished. So what you need to do is you need to test your wine once more in the hydrometer. But first things first, gotta sanitize. So I made my sanitizing solution with one gallon of hot water and one tablespoon of sanitizer. I've sanitized all my equipment ahead of time and I'm ready to go. So this is a good time for you to taste and evaluate how you've done. We're gonna start with control apple. So you just wanna take off your lid. And first thing I'd recommend, give it a good smell. Mmm. So there's three things you never wanna smell in a homemade wine. And that would be acetone smell, wet cardboard smell, or vinegar smell. Any of those three smells will indicate that your wine has turned and gone sour and it's no good. Don't even bother bottling at this point. Cloudiness, if it refuses to go clear like this, you wanna be able to see right through it, like nice and clear. That indicates that it's really, really good and ready to bottle. So next, you wanna taste it. So I'm just gonna take my dropper that I've sanitized and just pull a little bit so that you can taste it. Smell it again outside of the fermenter. You know, swish it around to so get a good aroma. It should smell lightly appley, a little bit like wine. So this is a bit drier of a wine than I'm used to. I usually make in like a sweeter wine. So at this point, you can decide how you want to customize this to your taste. So you can do what's called adding dosage. Adding dosage is basically boiling up your one part sugar, one part water combo, and adding a little bit to the wine to bring up the sweetness. This is kind of like an apple chardonnay if I had to classify it. So for me, I probably would do half a cup of sugar, half a cup of water, just enough to bring up the sweetness, just to touch more to that pineal greedio range. But that is totally up to you. So let's taste the next batch. So this batch is the acid times two. Let's taste that together. As always, give it a good smell. Mmm, now this one smells more flavorful than the first control. This one you can definitely smell more of the apple scent. However, this one is more like a Chardonnay than the first one because of the acid times too. But it does have more complex flavor. So when you compare the two, this one has a tighter mouthfeel, a little bit more complexity of apple. You can taste the apple a little better in the acid times too. And now for the sugar times two. I already know this is gonna be my favorite. Wow.
Now that's really delicious. That has a really nice warming mouthfeel. It's got plenty of apple tones. There's even like a woody oakiness a little bit. So it just goes to show that varying your ingredients can make three separate, completely different types of wine in the finished product. All right, so next I'm gonna show you how to rack and bottle. I'm gonna do the sugar times two because I like that one best. Maybe I'll go to the other ones. Um, I'll show you that in just a minute. All right, so let's show you how to get from here to here. All you're gonna do is you're gonna take your racking tube that's been sanitized. You're gonna stick it into here. And I've got my automatic bottle filler on here so that it can be stopped just by lifting it up. It just makes things so much easier. So you're gonna, I'm gonna actually bring you guys around so you can see. Okay, so I've got my jug of wine up here ready to be racked. I've got my tube going in here at a lower level. That's really important so that gravity can work to get your wine from here to here. And you're just gonna press down on this one with the automatic wine filler, lift up on this plunger all the way. This is hard to do one-handed. And then push it down in one good fluid motion to start the flow of wine. And then you just want to wait until all of the liquid is in this jug instead of this one. You'll notice I just tilted the bucket. That's so that I don't suck up any of the sediment because the hole isn't exactly at the bottom. It's a little further up. So I just lifted it out of the liquid in this one to help it keep flowing down in the other one. And that's perfect. Make sure you wash out your jugs and sanitize them right away. You don't leave this sitting overnight because then you'd have to throw away your jug unless you don't mind throwing it away. And you can measure your specific gravity to see where you ended up. So I'm just going to pour a little bit of this in here and get my hydrometer reading. Now that there's no sediment to worry about, I can do this, pour it from here to there without worrying about clouding up the wine. And then you're just gonna take your hydrometer and float it in there, gently. And you're gonna basically compare this to what it was before. So this is basically at absolute zero. So that tells me that my wine is actually 16% and it's fermented all the way. It can sometimes not go to the full level. That's okay too, as long as you stop the fermentation by using the potassium sorbate stabilizer crystals. Um, so yeah, we know that this is exactly 16% in the two times sugar batch and we're ready to bottle. Next, you wanna add your potassium sorbate, one half teaspoon to the gallon, and then top it off with a little bit of water, just from tap water, and then give it a quick shake. Okay, potassium sorbate going in. One half teaspoon. This is really fun because it'll disperse and like melt and shoot all over the surface of the wine. I really enjoy watching it. Next, I'm just going to top off with a little bit of water. Just regular cold tap water is fine. No big deal. 
All right, so I'm gonna put on a regular cap, give it a shake, and then I'm gonna start bottling. Ooh, very frothy. That's okay. Let's give it a sit for a minute until the bubbles go away. This tells me that there could have been further fermentation had I not put the stabilizer in. So it's very good to make sure you're watching what happens inside the wine after you do that. And there we go. So we're good now. Um, if you're really unsure or you know don't want to take any precautions, you can add extra stabilizer up to one teaspoon per one gallon. So I've re-sanitized my racking wand and bottle filler. Once again, this is gonna go in the fluid. What's nice about this is now that I've racked it off the sediment, I don't have to worry about stirring up stuff at the bottom. All right, so in order to get this started, you take your wand and you press it down into the bottom of the bottle first. It can't fill unless it's pressed down. So you gotta be very, very important. Pull up your plunger all the way once again and all the way down. And that'll start filling your bottles. With the automatic bottle filler, I usually wait until the liquid goes all the way to the top of the neck before I lift it up so that the uh, volume of the bottle filler itself doesn't affect the wine space in the bottle and I'll still have room for corks. Hopefully you guys can see that liquid. So see by waiting till it gets to the top of the bottle, the volume dropped after pulling out the cork and I've got just enough room for the cork. And you just want to continue on until all of your bottles are full. And since we have three one gallon batches, that's about four to five bottles per each gallon. I'll see you when they're all full. Hey guys, so I just wanted to show you my setup for when I boil my corks. These are just seven corks in a saucepan filled with water, and then I used a glass candle plate. You can use a plate or anything that'll fit inside of your pan. And then I put them on top of the corks to weigh them down. So I'm gonna bring this to a boil. I'm gonna boil them for 10 minutes, and then I'm gonna shut off the heat and let them sit for at least 30 minutes before they're ready to use. You always want to make extra, so a gallon will do approximately five and a half bottles in the 750 milliliter. So I've got seven corks in here for one gallon. That gives me two extra corks. Corks are cheap. Don't worry about it. And now we have to cork. This is your corker. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the cork and you're going to set it right inside this chamber here. You want to make sure you push it all the way down into the chamber just like that. You want to be very careful when you're corking your bottles. Bottles can slip and they can hurt you. Uh, this is much easier when you have someone helping you so that they can hold the bottle steady. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to rest the corker right on top of the neck of the bottle. Gently pull the arms down till they rest against the neck. So just press very, very gently. There'll be a magic moment when the cork just pops right in place. And there you have it. One corked bottle. And now you just keep corking until all of your bottles are done. Sometimes cork particles will stick inside of the chamber here. Just make sure you clear those out and they don't get in the way. And now that your bottles are all corked, the next thing you do is to make a label. You want to label everything specifically. In this case, I'm going to call this one Sweet Apple. I'm going to put on the specific gravity and also the date. Um, you have to let these sit in the bottle for six months before you can drink them. Uh, they'll develop uh, flavors and age better in the bottle. 
You can drink these right away, but you probably don't want to. You really want to let these age in the bottle. Homemade wines are best drank when they have in one to two years. You don't want to go further too much beyond that unless it's a vegetable wine. Well, I really hope you enjoy my basics and winemaking series. Um, I really appreciate you guys joining in. Any other wine videos I'm going to do from here out are either going to be tasting wines that I made prior or full on wine recipes from start to finish. Um, I've got a beautiful fresh peach wine wine video in the works and I'm going to be showing you uh, how I made the violet color changing wine from the previous video that I'll link down below. All right. Give us a big thumbs up if you like what you saw today. Don't forget to leave a comment below if you have any questions. I'm more than happy to answer them for you. If you have any wine that you want me to try, like on a dare, I'm willing. I love experimenting with wine. It's one of my favorite things to do. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode of all the fun going on here in the lab. And be like the bats in the belfry and hit that bell so you get notified every time we upload. Thank you for joining me again, and we'll see you next time here in the lab. Bye.